without further ado, the largest social media channel in all Web3, second largest on YouTube, largest when you take into account all the social media together. They're also SAG Hollywood actors, Austin and Aaron Arnold of Altcoin Daily. Make some noise, clap, let's go. Hey, thank you very much, everybody. Great to be at a crypto conference in real life. I like to call meeting in real life Web Zero. And uh, this panel is about responsibility responsibility today and we do have a responsibility to have as much fun on the last day of this conference as we can that's right and here at altcoin daily we drop one video per day dropping perspective opinion covering the cryptocurrency market so thank you for inviting us adam hey hey what we have coming up what's your next project right now the next project in crypto no in acting hollywood we replaced the hollywood panel Doing a um, kind of like Shark Tank, except for crypto, we'll be judges on that. And also we're producing a show called Cryptos, which is like Silicon Valley and Entourage, pilot to be filmed later this year. Shark Tank, but for crypto. You'll be judges. Maybe this guy will be a judge too. They let him on TV. Miggy, get up here. Are you safe for television, Miggy? Sometimes. It just depends on my mood, but yes. Uh, it's great to be here. My name is Miguel of Crypto. It's always a pleasure to get a join a fine panel like this to kind of just, you know, help drop some ideas. Miggy, you have to sit on that table right there. I am not Done. joking. All right. I'll do it. I got it. <laughs> uh, hey, one? Coming up next saying? is the amazing Crypto Wendy. Oh, she's the largest female influencer in the space. Give it up for the lovely Wendy. And guess what? A couple days ago, it was her birthday. Happy birthday, Wendy. Testing, testing. <gasps> you can hear me. Exciting. Thank you guys so much. I'm Crypto Wendy O. Some people call me Wendy. Some people call me lots of different things on the internet. But anyways, I run the largest female crypto YouTube channel in the world. And I do TikTok. I do all kinds of really great stuff. We've got a free newsletter. And we're really just focused on getting everybody involved. Crypto, Web3, NFTs, Metaverse. But doing it in a way... That isn't intimidating because crypto is for everyone. Bitcoin's for everyone. NFTs are for everyone. Thank you for having me. Hey, in the crowd, I know you're tired, but on the count of three, can we get a big happy birthday? One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday. birthday! Thank you. All right, coming up next, probably the smartest man on YouTube, but the worst dress. He, he wears these weird shorts to show off his calves. Come up here, mind your biz, Seth Estrada. Do some push-ups, Chet Zaps. You want to see him do push-ups? Let's go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Bitcoin's going up. It's going up, guys. It's going up. And now it's falling. Now, now, now it's, it's falling. All right. Explain pretty, what you do, impressive. Steph, besides push-ups. That was really good. Okay, when I'm not otherwise being forced to do push-ups against my will, I talk a lot about mining, proof of work, proof of stake, a lot of the nerdy stuff in crypto that we don't like to think about, but makes it all work. So Mind Your Biz, the channel that started talking about all that stuff and has gone into a privacy advocacy brand where we talk about how to keep crypto safe. That's what I do. Okay, the last guy up here, definitely the best looking guy on the stage. I'm sorry, Mr. Hollywood Superstar. But when you see him, you'll know what I mean. He is part of the BitBoy Crypto Crew, which is the largest YouTube channel on, uh, well, in the world. And he owns the most subscribed Metaverse channel currently on YouTube. It is Brian Emery of Meta Money. Share mics. <laughs> Did you really? Seth hurt himself. What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Brian. Uh, we cover the Metaverse Web3 every single day. Uh, doing live stream, just trying to stay up on the news and what's going on and kind of see how all this is going to change our uh, society. And uh, man, it's exciting times, exciting to be here with everybody. And uh, everybody I've met this week has been so awesome. Uh, and no, hey, let's build together and let's crush it. And his hair never moves. That hair is beautiful. We got Hollywood superstars over here. One's one wearing a hat. And Brian over there is looking beautiful. Anyhow, so... You've all been to YouTube, you've all had that 
epiphany where you got a flat tire on the side of the road, you had to change it, or maybe you were a teenager raised by a single mother and one of these days you have to learn how to shave. The rest of the world goes through the same process when it comes to learning about Web3 concepts, how to download a wallet, how to store your private keys. These are not as simple as we think it is. And these are the front lines of that mass adoption. So, my first question for you guys, being the front lines, through all of these mainstream people outside this venue and in this venue, what does your audience mean to you? Aaron, go. Our audience means everything to me. And so, you know, not promoting scams, getting scams out of the industry, the utmost important. And we got to ask ourselves, how are, like, what is the problem with, how, how do scams prevail in this industry? Scammers prey on underinformed people who are FOMOing in to different opportunities. A lot of scams and victims happened last year. Less is happening this year. So the most important thing that everybody in the audience and in anybody's audience can do is slow down. Don't worry about FOMOing in. Take your time. Measure twice, cut once as it were. And the most important thing we can do is make sure that we promote the best people in the industry. NFTs, there were a lot of scams last year, just like there are a lot of scams in altcoins in 2017. But the reason there are less scams in altcoins in 2021 is people were talking, trying to prop up the good ones, get rid of the bad ones, including the bad actors. So the audience means the utmost important to me and everybody here, and obviously that's something we need to protect. Wendy, what does your lovely audience mean to you? My audience to me is more so of my network. They're my friends, they're people that I respect, and they're people that I think come to me because I'm me. I'm very blunt, I'm very forward. I say what's on my mind, I try not to hold things back, but I try to do so in a way that is conducive to the space. I will call things out when I need to call things out, and I will always protect the underdogs. For me, crypto has been a really, really amazing space, an opportunity. But at the same time, there's a lot of toxicity in the space, and I think it's important that we all try to bring each other up, regardless of where you come from. Your background doesn't matter. Just because you grew up with money doesn't mean you're important. Just because you grew up poor doesn't mean you're important. We're kind of all put here on this place to improve our quality of life and to procreate and to, you know, do what's best for our friends and family. So to, for to, me, to procreate. To procreate, yeah. To procreate, all right. <laughs> well, even if you don't want to have kids, you have cute little fur babies. But anyways, it's just about having a better quality of life for everybody. And that's what my audience means to me and kind of pushing them in the right direction. All right, all right. So everyone in this, yeah, let's clap. That was awesome. Yeah. Procreate and prosper. All right. So everyone in this the Los Angeles Convention Center, we all love Web3, otherwise we wouldn't have paid the ticket price to be here. We know it's the future. Outside our Starbucks barista, the Uber driver who took us here, or that uh, significant, that, that, we, that stranger we talked to last night while drunk. They all need to eventually have some cryptocurrency, understand the metaverse, in order for this stuff to be mass adopted. And these guys are where they're going to go to learn. It's always end up on YouTube one way or another. It's the simplest place to learn. If you have an Android phone, and most of America does, because they make less than 40K a year, YouTube is built into it. They can't even uninstall it. They're going to find it. In that regard, knowing how important you guys are to mass adoption, Seth Estrada, what is your responsibility to your audience, to your viewers? Oh my gosh, the responsibility runs pretty deep, actually. But it starts with, I mean, having that relationship, being genuine, so that you can win the privilege of educating, right? I mean, you may, you may have uh, people that you know in your life, right? Close family members, friends, who you love very much, but they might tell you like, hey, I really think that I, there's this really cool investment that I heard about. For all you know, it's an MLM, and, and you don't always <laughs> immediately trust them. The responsibility is to try to make sure that the relationship is in the right place, and that you're also vetting the things that you're going to talk to these people about but that that those both of those things line up correctly so yeah part of it is getting the right projects part of it is having the right relationship being the right person but then also finding out the right way of messaging so that they'll understand uh, that's the last kind of component there because you may have members of the audience who have been in crypto for two weeks but you have other the others that have been in for two years 
And the messaging and the way that you share is going to have to change just a little bit for each one of those groups. So one thing I love about YouTube, I call you guys educators. I try not to call you guys influencers. I don't even try to call you guys creators because in this space, creator can mean NFT artist or developer. I like to call you Web3 educators. I know that when I was in college, I fell asleep through some classes and other classes I was really engaged. And I used to go, oh, that teacher is awful. And my friend's like, no, he's, aw he's awesome. People learn differently. Web3 complex. Web3, crypto, metaverses, even DAOs and GameFi and DeFi, they're hard to understand. You need to find someone you can connect with that teaches you in a style that, that helps you learn. Might not help everyone learn, but helps you learn. In that regard, being authentic, being yourself, having your real personality, not a gimmick, is important. Miggy, being authentic, what does that mean to you? How important is it to be your true self? Um, for me, it has honestly been the foundation of uh, my own personal branding and my development in this space is really being able to stay true to myself, my beliefs, uh, my relationships with you know my friends, coworkers, family, and uh, create an extension of that in this space to connect with others who are looking to be educated. So for me, I think uh, the very key thing for blockchain is that it is authentic. You know, it is open source. It is a uh, trustworthy. You know, there's a lot of things about it and that people can embody as well. So for me, that's the key is really just being yourself, being open-minded and uh, you know, being willing to work with other people. Austin, you're sitting next to Miggy who looks like a real life Pokemon. Sometimes he travels like a stuffed animal. I don't know where he's at right now. <laughs> I left that at home. You have a much different personality and content making style, but you are very authentic. In fact, I had someone come to me today and say, hey, the altcoin daily twins are the only ones I can learn from because everyone else is too hyper and comedic and I need it given to me straight. How important is it for you guys to be authentic to properly communicate these very complex concepts? I see our audience at altcoin daily as sort of an extension of ourselves. Meaning when we started the channel, we didn't come from a coding background or even a traditional finance background. And there's a lot of channels at that time that only spoke to the TA people or only spoke to the coding people, at least the ones I, I knew at the time. So when we started the channel, we wanted to speak to basically people like us or our friends or the type of content we could watch. So that's sort of the point of view that we bring and we've just cultivated a like-minded audience along the way. So this is for everyone. Anyone can answer, you can argue if you want. I personally believe that if you're inauthentic, that's what makes you a bad YouTuber, a bad influencer, a bad creator. When you pretend to be someone you're not, when you pretend to talk about things you don't know. When it comes to authenticity, do you think it's the most important thing? Is there something more important? What's well, your thoughts? I, I think we're going into an age where people are craving authenticity. They're, they're, they're over the fake. We, I mean, social media has been propped up for so long. It's a lot of Photoshop videos, pictures, and it's only showing the best parts of people's lives, right? So, we, you know, it just, it's just space we're caught up in. I think we're going back to a time where we just crave authenticness, and that's something that we try to do, and as I try to do, I could show all my wins and all my best investments only, and I could look like a superstar, or I could show you some of my fails too, and be transparent, and you can learn from my mistakes. So it's, it's my responsibility as a creator to share those times, to, show the, to share those failures myself, um, because otherwise you're not being true to you know what's going on and in crypto everything is changing every single day so there's tons of learning experiences and tons of times we're gonna have to to pivot you know and so just stay transparent along that and you're gonna help you know not, not only just creators people in general you can help your family learn from your mistakes so make sure you share you know what's actually going on in your journey uh, in your your web 3 and metaverse life so authenticity will help mass adoption. Yeah. If, if social media is the front lines of mass adoption and you're not being authentic, if Wendy O isn't really being Wendy O, then they're not getting true information. Eventually, they'll go out and get harmed. You got something to say? Adam, I would rather hang out with a poor person who's authentic than a rich person who's fake. I'd rather hang out with an ugly person who's authentic than a rich person who's fake. And in the Web3 space, where everything is open, transparent, anybody can know exactly what's going on if they choose, why not be more authentic, right? Why not attract those kind of people? Well, now I know why you hang out with me. Hey, that authentic. was my line. He is authentic. 
Okay, unfortunately, guys, in this space, Web3 space, we're all super, super educated, super, super passionate about all the awesome things that cryptocurrency and blockchain technology can do for the world that sometimes we gatekeep it. When someone doesn't know how to download a wallet, they don't know how to store their private keys, they're a little bit too judgmental. A lot of people in this space, they don't watch YouTube. They think it's, uh, they're past it. They're on Twitter, but no one goes to Twitter first. Twitter is like the advance. It's like level nine of a game. You have to kind of know what you're doing to get to Twitter. Do you guys think gatekeeping is a problem? in this space it's a big problem in this space the early well not even the early days but when i first started into 2017 it was absolutely awful <laughs> if you asked a question you were stupid if you didn't know how to code you were stupid if you didn't know how to trade you were stupid and it's actually doing a disservice to the entire community because when you look back and you read um, satoshi's white paper and you learn about bitcoin it's money for everybody and it's money that goes across borders. It's money that goes to everybody. It was created for the people by the people. So that type of toxic behavior is kind of counterproductive. And we don't do that on my show. We don't tolerate that type of behavior. If you need help with something and you reach out and I can't help you, I'll send you to somebody who's smarter than me or somebody who can. And it's all about helping other people improve their quality of life. I'm not going to tell you what to buy. I'm not going to tell you when to sell. But I am going to encourage you to continue to self-educate and utilize critical thinking. Who would you send them to on this panel? Well, if it's a tech question, then they're going to Seth. If it is a general question, I'm sending them to Altcoin Daily. If it's another tech question or an NFT thing, I'm sending them to Miguel or to my good friends over at MetaMoney. So this is unique almost just to Web3. All the YouTubers kind of hang out together. They kind of support each other. They grow with each other. BitBoy did an amazing panel. By the way, Brian, shout out for, for BitBoy. Uh, he did an amazing panel yesterday when he said, hey, I didn't just win, we all won. We, being authentic and having the audience's best interests in mind increases mass adoption. As mass adoption is increased, we go with it, we all come together. There's no drama here. You guys are awesome. Hey, big hand to the YouTubers. Like and subscribe. We have some fans here. I got to take some questions. I got to take some questions. <laughs> I will stand behind you. Please excuse me while I do this real quick. So I just want to say one thing because this is about morality in Web3. And uh, I know some of you personally on stage and you do feel very authentic to me and I'm a fan. I do have to say that I know someone, not in this panel or in this space or room right now, but who worked for BitBoy, and this isn't to trash anyone or anything, but this is a panel about morality, Adam, so excuse me, but they said he's the biggest pumper dumper on the planet, so I'm not going to give him a win here on, during a panel on morality, okay? But I love you all, and I'm, I love Web3, and I'm really grateful to be here, so thank you for this beautiful panel. Thank you. And that is something. Everyone has a different personality in the space. Everyone has different opinions. It doesn't matter if it's negative or good. The fact is, we're trying to achieve mass adoption. We're all passionate. Any other questions? If somebody's question is, where's the party at tonight? The person you should go to is uh, Adam. <laughs> so I've always been somebody that wanted to be an educator and provide information to people looking to get into the space. But if you were to try to find me right now, you wouldn't be able to. Has that kind of publicity and lack of privacy ever impacted you guys in a negative way? If you have any kind of audience on social media, you're gonna get barraged with just like hateful, trolly comments, you know, no matter if you're in crypto or anywhere. So it ain't for the faint of heart. And you do need to like learn how to get through that. Um, but it's definitely worth it. Yeah, I'm going to just jump in and say what you're describing there is, we call it micro-celebrity. I mean, nobody on the panel has like 15 million subscribers or, you know, or, uh, or their, their name like highly ranked in IMDb. You're not seeing, well, you're seeing some people here on mainstream media, mainstream news, but it's not this regular fixture. And so it's not the same thing as say like, you know, how like Tom Cruise can't go out in public. That guy, like his... His like public life is over, right? 
Here, it's probably a little bit more targeted. It is a little bit unnerving for a guy like me who's got a smaller following here on stage to show up to some trade shows and have somebody walk up who I've never met before be like, oh, hey, Seth, what's going on? Really familiar, right? And it does happen. That's a little weird, but uh, but it's also, you know, it's it's validation that what we're doing matters and what we're doing is personal, right? So thankfully, like for me anyway, that's how I take it, is that it's proof that what I'm doing is actually changing lives and it's changing them for the better. Yeah. We have one final question from a lovely lady you all know. What's the best part about being a YouTuber? Can I get this? Go ahead. The best part for me about being a YouTuber and creating content and being able to work from home is I have got a five-year-old daughter. So the fact that I don't have to drive, and I'm born and raised LA, born and raised LA County. The fact that I don't have to commute round trip three hours, five times a week, four times a week, and I get to pick my daughter up from school. I get to take her to school. I get to eat dinner with her. I get to help her with her homework. That's pretty amazing because if you, if any of you are in the audience, y'all live in LA and you have kids, you're working, the commute time is absolutely a nightmare. So for me, that's probably the best part about being a YouTuber. And also too, I get to reach a global audience and I get to talk and I get to have an impact on people who maybe just need to hear that everything is gonna be okay. You've all had people tell you that, that you've changed their lives, right? Especially in 2021. That makes it all worth it. Hey, guys, listen. In, the, in our industry, so many people are docs. They hide behind Twitter avatars, energy avatars. It's cool. I mean, we all do it. These guys are live on stage every day, showing the real face, taking you into your lives, uh, and talking about things that are very necessary. For Web3 to take off, everyone needs to know how to use it. And YouTube's where they go. And it's brave of them to be undocs out there every day, to come on stage, field questions, in an industry that likes being doxxed. Let's give a round of applause for being brave enough to come up here and share their stories. <laughs>